What's up, students? It's Feature Friday. 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 <laughs> yeah. I hope you're excited about Feature Friday today. I'm going to talk about something that maybe some of you guys don't think is very exciting, but I'm going to talk about some books that I would recommend that you read. And so some of you guys might not be um, book connoisseurs, you might not be regular readers, uh, but this list is going to have something in there for everybody. And so I just want to help you guys out. As you can see, I've got a lot of books behind me. Don't worry, most of those books I haven't read or I haven't read all the way. Uh, I went to Bible college and so I had to buy a whole bunch of books for every class that I took. And then I went to seminary and I had to buy a whole bunch of books for every class I took there. And those are all on my shelf. Some of them we didn't have to read the whole book. Some of them we did, but I don't remember reading them. And then the list goes on. So I've compiled a list. Uh, there's several different categories here, but there's something here for everyone. So I want to encourage you. I also want to encourage you that a lot of the books that I've read are nonfiction. And so that means they're truthful books. They're mostly helpful books, Christian living type books uh, that can help us in some kind of practical way in our walk with Christ. But I know some of you guys have probably read some fiction books uh, that might be um, fun, just, just fun to read. And so I want to encourage you, send those books in. What books do your friends need to read? What books do I need to read? Tell me those books and I will promote those as I can. Uh, either in another video or on Instagram or something like that. So tell me what books you have read. And so with that, I'm going to get into the list. So the first list here, the first category are books that rocked my world. Uh, these books changed my perspective. These books caused me to think about the world in a whole different way and really helped me as I progressed in growing uh, in my walk with Jesus. And so just a few of those really quick. One, Radical by David Platt. I think this should be required reading for all believers. Um, it's a book that will help you to understand why we need to go, why we need to make disciples. A really great book. Crazy Love by Francis Chan. He talks about the love that Christ has for us, the love that we are supposed to show to others. Great, great read. Knowing God by J.I. Packer. Wonderful book. Desiring God by uh, John Piper. A Praying Life by Donald Miller. This book really helped to shape uh, my understanding of the importance of prayer in our lives. And so check out that book, Don't Waste Your Life by John Piper. All these are really great books that have shaped the way that I look at the world and the way that I try to live my life. And so I think they would each be worthy of you picking up and uh, reading. And if you want to borrow one, you can let me know and I will let you borrow a book. Totally fine. Books that helped me practically. This list is a book of, of a, a list of books that have all helped me in some kind of practical way uh, in my journey with Christ. The first one is Humility by C.J. Mahaney. Uh, we all could use a little dose of humility at times. C.J. Mahaney does a great job of talking about that. Spiritual Disciplines by Donald Whitney. I've led you guys through a series that I'm mostly based on this book. Uh, Donald Whitney does a great job of talking about each of the spiritual disciplines, how they can be used in our lives, and why they are important to us. Praying the Bible, also by Donald Whitney. This book really helped me to change the way that I look at prayer, how I pray, and uh, the practical idea of praying God's Word back to Him. Bible Doctrine by Wayne Grudem. Uh, I used a big one. Uh, it's about this thick for uh, seminary, but there's a smaller version and I've, I've read that one too and it is super helpful and it's actually pretty approachable. Uh, so if you want to learn more about who God is and understanding um, doctrine and theology, that's a good book for you to pick up. What is a Healthy Church Member by Thabiti N. E. Abwile. Uh, he is a great author and he really helps us to understand why it's important uh, to be a part of a local church body and how we are to act as believers as we go to church and as we live among other believers. 
and then Risk is Right by John Piper. In the same way that Radical kind of pushed me uh, to know that we're called to live in a way that is different from the world and in a way that is specifically intentional uh, about making disciples, uh, Risk is Right did the same kind of thing and just reminding me of that. And it's a tiny little book. You could probably read it in an afternoon if you wanted to. It's a great one. Risk is Right by John Piper. The third category here is books that made me think. Uh, these are books that really kind of helped me just to think about things differently or remind me of things that I had forgotten. And so one is Stop Asking Jesus Into Your Heart. That's right. It's called Stop Asking Jesus Into Your Heart. It's by J.D. Greer. That's a book that really helped me to understand uh, practically what it means to be a follower of Christ, practically what it means to be saved, uh, and how that's a little bit different and how some of the, the ways that we talk about it in the church traditionally are not helpful. Uh, so we need to be biblical about that. And so this is a good book to help you with that. Seven Summits of Church History. When I think about church history, I think maybe this is kind of boring. I think this is going to be a really big, thick textbook. Uh, but Seven Summits in Church History by Jason Dusing uh, is pretty small, and it's really helpful just to hit the high points of church history, uh, and it was actually pretty fun. So if you're into history at all, uh, or even if you're not, you might want to check this book out. The King James Only Controversy. Uh, if you know what the King James Only Controversy is, uh, this is definitely a book to check out. But if you just have questions about where the Bible came from, how we ended up with the books of the Bible that we have, and how they're arranged and all that kind of stuff, uh, this is a great book to pick up for that. It's called The King James Only Controversy by James White. Another one that really made me think, Finally Alive by John Piper. It's about the new birth, uh, being a new creation in Christ. It really helped me to think about the new birth that Jesus talks about in John chapter 3. Spectacular Sins by John Piper. Uh, it's kind of weird and crazy to think about sins being good, uh, but these are sins from the Bible uh, that actually had a crazy spectacular um, outcome. For example, uh, Judas betraying Jesus. That was super sinful, uh, obviously not okay, uh, but Jesus went to the cross and he died for our sins. And so that's a spectacular sin in a way. Uh, also, Respectable Sins by Jerry Bridges. This book helped me to think about the sins in our lives that we uh, somehow justify and we say they're okay. Uh, he talks about those. Really helpful book. Historical Helps. Uh, Seven Summits of Church History. That's a really good historical one. But also, if you're into biographies or if you're interested in who people are, um, Bonhoeffer, Pastor, Martyr, Prophet, Spy is a really good one. Uh, it's kind of big. I'll show it to you. It's kind of big, uh, but that's okay because I didn't read this one. I read this one. It's the abridged version. Uh, you should definitely pick up the abridged version. It's a really good read. And then uh, The Legacy of Luther uh, is a great book. I read it a couple years ago for the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, The Legacy of Luther by R.C. Sproul and uh, Philip Nichols. Uh, I can't remember his name, but Nichols, something Nichols. Great books. So that's the official list. Uh, those are all books that I've read and enjoyed. And I think that you would be uh, spending your time wisely if you read those books. They'd be super helpful for you. But a few bonuses. Um, I wanted to throw a couple fiction books in here just to help you guys out because you probably think this is the most boring book list you've ever heard. But Chronicles of Narnia, I read that when I was really young and uh, really found it helpful. And then the movies came out, so now you don't even have to read it, right? I'm kidding. Most of you guys are saying you have to read the book instead of watching the movie. Some of you guys are saying watch the movie, don't read the book. Either way, Chronicles of Narnia, it's a good series. Pilgrim's Progress, uh, I've listened to it a couple times. I actually didn't read it, but I have listened to it. It's a great um, novel about, it's a story about a Christian's journey uh, through life. And so, a lot of people would say that's required reading for any Christian. Um, I would probably agree with that just because it's so historical, but uh, you can listen to it on audio. It's on YouTube, I think, for free, uh, so you could listen to it there. But also a couple bonuses for you, devotional readings. Uh, one would be uh, Morning by Mornings by C.H. Spurgeon. This is not by any means uh, the best devotional I've ever read or... Uh, the only devotional I've ever read, but it's just the one that I'm reading right now. And so morning by mornings by morning, uh, by C.H. Spurgeon. 
And then the Valley of Vision is a collection of Puritan prayers that I find to be really helpful uh, devotional reading. And then resources that you need to have. Um, These aren't necessarily required, but I think that you are doing yourself a disservice if you don't have these things. Um, One is a study Bible. Um, I prefer the ESV study Bible. It was super helpful to me as a young Christian. Uh, The ESV study Bible helped me out so much. There are so many resources in it. The Bible app. You have to have the Bible app. If you have a smartphone and you don't have the Bible app on there, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice. So get the Bible app. uh, Get a study Bible. Um, There's a book called Operation World. Actually, it's right here. You've probably seen it on my bookshelf a million times. It's called Operation World. Um, This book is super helpful uh, in telling us the world, uh, different countries of the world, the people groups that are there, how many people are Christians, and how we can pray for them. And so obviously that's a great resource for us to be thinking missionally and be praying for people around the world. I don't use it every single day or um, really that often, but when I first got it and when I was in Bible college, it really helped me to look through and do research on different countries and know how we can pray and just to think missionally, which is something that I've carried with me to this day. So if you want, if you have an interest in missions, uh, I would definitely pick up Operation World, but resources that you definitely need to have the Bible app and a study Bible. Um, If you need help getting either of those things, please let me know and I will help you out. That's the list. Uh, Hopefully you guys have some time to sit down and read. Um, Hopefully you know of the importance of reading and understand just how awesome reading is. Um, I know I go through times when I don't want to read at all um, and when I can't sit down and concentrate to read, but As Christians, we're called to be disciplined, and so I hope that you will be disciplined, and I hope that you will see the joy uh, that reading good books can bring to your life. See you on the next one.